Employees of the state emergency service have held a rally in Enerhodar. The reason for the protests, according to them, was the kidnapping by the Russian military of the head of the first state fire and rescue detachment, Vitaly Troyan. The protesters claim that the man's office was first searched and then he was taken away in an unknown direction. The town's mayor, Dmitro Orlov, said that the Russian military had used physical force against peaceful protesters, as well as damaged fire and rescue equipment. The Russian army also forcibly took the acting head of the state fire and rescue detachment out in an unknown direction. A video released on the internet shows the man being forcibly pushed into a car, according to Hromatsky broadcaster, citing the mayor, who in turn referred to firefighters. The occupation authorities offered the chief of the fire and rescue squad to walk under the Russian flag. The town of Anerhodar has been under temporary Russian occupation since March the 3rd, at the end of April, the legitimate mayor, Dmitro Orlov, was forced to leave for Zaporizhia, where he and his team continued to manage Enerhodar. This day, Russian troops have conducted an offensive operation in the areas of Lysychansk and Severodonetsk and shelled residential areas. This was announced by the head of Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Sergei Haidai. According to him, targeted hits on apartment buildings are carried out with heavy weapons. It is currently known about 12 killed and more than 40 wounded residents of Severodonetsk. One person died in Hirske community. In total, according to Serhii Haidai, more than 60 houses have been destroyed in Luhansk region in a day. Due to the Russian shelling, there is no electricity and water supply in the whole territory of the region. There is almost no mobile communication. Gas supply is only partially in three settlements. Serhii Haidai, the head of Luhansk Regional Military Administration, said that despite the constant shelling of the so-called Road of Life, 37 people had been taken out of Luhansk region. According to the head of the region, the evacuation was extremely difficult and risky, as the Lysychansk Bakhmut Road is shelled by the Russian military. This day, people from Lysychansk, Bilohorivka and Severodonetsk have been taken out. We were lucky again. Everyone is safe. 37 people, 5 of them are children, 4 cats, 2 dogs, 2 guinea pigs, Haidai wrote on his telegram. The current day, Russian troops continue to shell Kharkiv and the region, said the head of the regional military administration, Oleg Sinyhubov. The Russian army fired at Kyivsky residential district of Kharkiv, as a result of which the boiler room of one of the medical institutions was damaged. There was also shelling of Shevchenkivsky district, Saltivka and Pivnichna Saltivka. There are wounded and dead. Among them are children. According to Oleg Sinyahubov, shelling was also carried out in other settlements of the region, where people were injured as well. A woman and a 13-year-old child received shrapnel wounds in Veliki Hutori. Another three people were injured in the shelling in the village of Shevchenkove in Kharkiv region. On the night of May the 20th, an enemy shell hit a private house in Derhachi in Kharkiv region, and a garage and a car caught fire in Maladanilivka as a result of the Russian military attack. This day, shelling continued on the front line in Donetsk region, said the head of the regional military administration, Pavlo Kirilenko. According to him, several settlements, including Avdiivka and Bakhmut, were hit. As a result of the shelling, five civilians died in Donetsk region, two in Bakhmut, one in Krasnohorivka, one in Avdiivka, and one in Hrstishchi. Another six people were injured. It is currently impossible to determine the exact number of victims in Mariupol and Volnovakha. According to the Union of Forces, during the day on May the 20th, Russian troops fired at about 50 settlements in Donbass. The Russian army does not stop shelling residential areas of Donetsk region. The National Police of Ukraine reports that the city of Liman is under enemy fire every day. The Russians do not stop and destroy it completely. They are purposefully hitting the house in areas, the National Police's telegram channel reads. The situation is unstable. It can get worse every hour. The town is constantly under artillery shelling, both mortar and Harad and Urahan rocket systems. The enemy shells the town with everything it can. Tonight we had a mine attack, and I went out, I had to go to the bathroom, and as I approached the window, it immediately hit me. The glass, yes, perhaps the glass, but here too the wound is on the forehead. Apparently something must have broken that glass. 
It is reported that one person from Liman was taken to Kramatorsk hospital during the day. On May the 19th, police also managed to evacuate 60 locals, including four children, to safety. There is an evacuation in other settlements of the region, which are under attack by the Russian army. During the day, they managed to evacuate people from Krasnohorivka, Konstantinivka and Antonivka. Among the evacuees are children and the elderly. The New York Times has published new evidence of Russian military crimes in Bucha. Testimonies and videos obtained by the New York Times show how the Russians executed at least eight Ukrainians in Bucha on March the 4th. A video taken by security cameras on March the 4th shows the Russian military leading Ukrainian prisoners somewhere. Among them was a man in a specific blue sweater. The soldiers took the men outside a nearby office building, which they seized and turned into a base. This video was sent by witnesses and shows what happened behind the building. There were shots, after which the prisoners did not return to where they were taken from. A March the 5th drone video shows bodies lying on the ground near the office building, with two Russian servicemen next to them. Among the bodies is a man in a blue sweater. Since the Russian invasion began, in almost every Ukrainian town and village, volunteers have been weaving camouflage nets for Ukrainian defenders. Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, 302 nets with a total area of 6,000 square meters have been made at Zaporizhia Soldiers' Mother Center. They do it according to the developed technology. They receive orders from the military and weave separately for military equipment and weapons and individually for soldiers. The density, the size, the color, we specify everything for all the nets that we make. And so we have done since 2015. We adjust all this to the needs of fighters. We take into account the place and time of the year when they will be disguised. This is the most important thing for us. It may be 50%, 70 or maybe 100% of filling these cells. We do what is necessary and no other way. Before the Wyshevanka Day, volunteers made an unusual camouflage net for the Ukrainian military. Symbols and codes were laid in it. This is the amulet of our Zaporizhia region, the amulet for our boys. This is the land we are defending. And then the idea went further. We will make a net with a flag, with the Ukrainian emblem, national symbols. And we'll go even further. Here we will make marigold flowers. And this is our land. The need for camouflage for Ukrainian soldiers is currently very high. After all, such nets make it possible to be invisible and save the lives of the military.